Rahab, a harlot ancestor of Jesus Christ. Who would have thought a descendant of Ham, in what the world calls one of the oldest professions known to man, prostitution, is saluted as the great, 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 28 times great, grandmother of one born of a virgin? Rahab was an outcast of society for her scarlet sin, but God wove this black woman into the lineage of Jesus Christ using a scarlet thread. In biblical terms, this woman was known as a harlot. In contemporary language, Rahab would be called a whore, prostitute, hooker, or call girl, but God had other plans for this woman of color. A little history is needed before Rahab's introduction. A dark-skinned Hebrew baby boy was found floating down the Nile River by an African princess. The Jewish baby was so dark that the black princess knew she could pass this baby off as the grandson of the most powerful king in Africa, the same pharaoh who had ordered the death of every Jewish male infant. This courageous princess gave the baby the African name Moses, possibly in honor of Pharaoh Thutmose. When Moses became a man, he rejected Egyptian life, left Egypt, married an Ethiopian woman, and then returned to Africa to deliver his Jewish people out of bondage. Moses led his Africanized Jews through the Red Sea into Asia in search of the promised land. After the Israelites left Africa by crossing the Red Sea, there were only 11 days from the land of Canaan that God promised to Abraham and his descendants. Due to their fear of strong black tribesmen, the Israelis spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness, surrounded by tribes of black people, such as the Hittites, Jebusites, Philistines, and Havites. Then God told Moses to come up into a mountain because it was time for the lawgiver to die. Deuteronomy 31 verse 14. Moses kissed Zipporah, his Ethiopian wife, and his half-Ethiopian sons goodbye for the last time. Numbers 12 verse 1. He ordained a Hebrew named Joshua as his successor who would usher the Hebrew nation into the land of promise. Forty years earlier, Joshua and his companion Caleb traveled to this land of the Canaanites as spies for Moses. Numbers 13 chapter 16 through 15 verse 1. During that expedition they found food unlike any other on earth. They returned with one cluster of grapes so heavy they had to carry it between them dangling from a pole. Due to the nutritious food raised on land so fertile, it was dubbed the land of milk and honey. And the black inhabitants of Canaan, Israel's promised land, were a strong and healthy people. As the Israelites entered their 40th year in the wilderness, Joshua took charge and led the Israelis into the land of the Canaanites. Recall the Canaanites were Ham's descendants through his accursed son Canaan. God wanted the Canaanites off this land because they had defiled it with incest, bestiality, homosexuality, and prostitution. Leviticus 20. The Jews received stern warnings that if they reverted to these practices, the land would also spew them out. Leviticus 18, verse 28, Jeremiah 32, verses 21 through 23. Jehovah God gave the Israelis very specific instructions to follow before giving them Canaan's land, such as, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments, and to them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, Ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Leviticus 20, verses 22 through 24. God took this land from Canaan's descendants, black people, and promised it to Abraham. When God commanded Joshua to take the children of Israel into the promised land, 
they came to the Canaanite city of Jericho. Joshua selected two men to spy out the land and bring back a report on the status of the land and its inhabitants. And they went and came into a hollered Rahab's house and lodged there. Joshua 2 verse 1. The number one objective of spies is to blend in and complete the mission without having their cover blown. Let's say that Sweden wanted to spy on the Ethiopians. Would the Swedes send a traditional blonde-haired, blue-eyed Swede to Ethiopia to spy on them? No. They would send someone with features similar to those of the inhabitants of that region. Joshua, also known as Oshia, 40 years earlier, fit the bill of that description, for he was a descendant of Joseph's mixed marriage to the African named Asenath, which produced Ephraim, the founder of his tribe. Numbers 13 verse 8. Now 40 years later, he knew what Canaanites looked like, so he logically selected men who would have blended in with the Canaanite people of Jericho. Since Jews and Ethiopians served in bondage in Egypt and intermarried, their infusion of Ham's bloodline into the Jews' lineage, along with that of the Jews' Egyptian masters who took sexual advantage of Hebrew slaves, would color their offspring similar to that of Canaanites. The scriptures state that when Moses liberated the Jews from the land of Egypt, they exited as a mixed multitude due to their interracial offspring, Exodus 12, verse 38. The offspring of these biracial unions would have made excellent spies by closely resembling the color of Jericho's Canaanites, Ham's descendants through Canaan. When these two spies arrived at the walled city of Jericho, they were drawn to a house on that city's wall that belonged to a Canaanite prostitute named Rahab. It is not told what gave them away, but these undercover agents were identified as outsiders by the black watchman on Jericho's wall. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men and hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they come to search out all the country. Joshua 2 verse 3. When the king's soldiers interrogated Rahab at her brothel's front door, she realized her supposed patrons were in danger. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Whither the men went, I know not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order up on the roof. Joshua 2, verses 4 through 6. Rahab was a very convincing fast talker because before they were laid down, she came up unto them on the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the reed sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Joshua 2, verses 8 through 11. This black harlot confessed she knew how the re sea closed upon the Egyptians, drowning their army while the Israelis simultaneously walked through on dry ground. This happened when Rahab was a little girl or even before she was born. Because she was still childbearing age and this event occurred 40 years earlier, she and Jericho's inhabitants also knew how the Israelis slaughtered a Hamitic giant king named Og, Deuteronomy 3 verse 11. 
These spies never set foot inside Jericho because Rahab's testimony told them all they needed to know. The dread of an Israeli attack was upon the land. This lady of the night not only had faith in the God of Israel, she also displayed a heart of gold by trying to extend salvation to her family. Rahab begged the two spies to spare their lives, saying, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Joshua 2, verses 12 through 13. Her negotiation pleased the spies, and the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Joshua 2, verse 14. Then under the cover of darkness, she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuer be returned, and afterward ye may go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee and it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless and if thou utter this our business then we will be quit of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According to your word, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days, until the pursuers were returned. So the two men returned, and descended from the mountain, and passed over, and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Joshua 2, verses 14 through 24. Because Rahab was a prostitute, her family looked down on her, and she had to live on the outskirts of the city. Yet this did not diminish Rahab's love for them. The same scarlet thread this black woman used to lure the spies from her window also saved the lives of her family. The red rope in this canonized window identified her house of ill repute on the wall as a place of sanctuary when the Israeli invaded the Canaanite city. All her relatives in her large house were spared. The strategy the Israelis used to conquer Jericho consisted of marching around the walls of the city in silence once a day for six days. On the seventh day, Joshua ordered them to march around the walls of Jericho seven times. On their seventh time around the scripture state, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had, and left them without outside the camp of Israel. And they burnt 
the city with fire. And all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessel of brass and of iron, they put into the treasure of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua 6, verses uh, 16 through 17 and 20 through 25. When this courageous black woman and her family were installed in the Israeli camp, she could no longer practice prostitution because Moses' law forbade it on pain of death. The record states that this Canaanite lived out the rest of her days among the Israelites. One Israeli from the tribe of Judah asked for her hand in marriage, and they wed. His name was Salmon. Rahab and Salmon gave birth to a half-black, half-Jewish son and named him Boaz. He is written of in the book of Ruth as a foreshadowing figure of mankind's coming redeemer, Jesus Christ. By giving birth to her half-black, half-Jewish son, Boaz, we find this former prostitute in the lineage of Jesus Christ. The biracial Boaz married Ruth the Moabitess, who herself also was also a black ancestry, being from the Canaanite city of Sodom, and she gave birth to Obed who had more black blood in him than his father Boaz, thanks to his now respectable Canaanite mother Rahab. Obed married and gave birth to Jesse, the father of King David, the giant slayer. This Rahab, the former harlot, was the great-great-grandmother of King David and therefore the grandmother 28 times removed of Jesus Christ, who was called the seed of David. The Bible is filled with irony, such as the pregnancy of a former black prostitute that made her an ancestor of Jesus Christ, who himself was born of a virgin.